Welcome everyone. Today we have a very special Diablo 4 guide video. In this video, we'll have a look at which of the class is going to be the best class for you at the launch of the game. We'll be going through a new updated tier list I have made after the service land, and this will be comparing all the changes and all the barbs and some nerfs to different classes and also different builds. We'll also be looking into some important considerations about the game, and you should be considering those personally. Are you going to enjoy the game? Are you going to play PvP? How are you going to build your class? How many classes are you going to play? Are you going to be playing more solo or more co-op? And what about the game economy? How are you going to trade with players with different builds? And I'll share with you guys some of my personal conflicts. Now, the second half of the video, what I'll do is I'll briefly talk about a few of the builds for each of the classes. So you can see I have made a ton of build during the open beta and also during the server slam. You can see we have almost a build for every class and I'll be going through some of my theories and understandings on each of the class. Now, similar to all of our guide videos, this article will be available on our website. So make sure you click the link below to come over to the website. So now that we have tried the server slam and also we got a feel of the classes after they change and a lot of nerves and also buffs and also try the actual drop rate for the legendaries. So previously we were having like three times or five times drop rate for the legendaries. Now that we tried everything, I really want to look at what is the best class for us. Because personally, I was planning to play Necromancer as my starting class. Because I played a lot of Path of Exile and also similar action RPG games before, I want to have an easy starter class that doesn't require a lot of items. I want to have a class that can clear the content, farm for items, and I can try a bunch of builds for other classes. But after the considerably sizable nerf to the Necromancer, I'm a little uncertain now. So this is why over here, on the first part, I want to be updating you guys with my personal tier list for each of the class with a lot of different rankings. Now, do keep in mind guys, I'm really bad with tier lists, and I usually go between 5 and 10. So the numbers you see here, they range from 5 and 10, they don't range from 1 to 10. So just, just so you know, I'm really terrible with rankings, so I tend to go with 5 to 10 instead of you know, 1 to 10. Now, because we only had two days for the server slam, I was unable to try all the class. The class I didn't get to try was the sources. So I'm using a lot of information from my viewers and also my friends who actually tried the class, and I'm hearing those things about the class from them. So I have personally tried four classes during the server slam, made a lot of builds for the past two days. I'm pretty proud of that, right? So right away with leveling, I do think Rogue and also sources still have the best time with leveling up as you go through the story and also go through the campaign. Now, one highlight is, even though Druid has been buffed a little bit, I still feel the leveling process for the Druid is a little bit short. Simply because the Druid, the resource system, the Druid actually have to, you know, get resource generators and also, you know, have to spend resource. Unlike Rogue, who actually, you know, regenerate this resource by itself, the Druid feels a little slow. And also, you know, as we see in terms of mobility, the Druid, the Necromancer, they don't have the fastest moving skills. And this makes it a little slower to travel around the maps. Now, of course, during the you know service line, we don't have months. Maybe with months, those classes that doesn't have you know all the mobility will be better. Now, very soon, I'll explain to you guys a little bit about what I mean by farming speed and also you know ease of the build as we go to the next part where we actually look at the builds for different classes, right? So for now, what I want to do is I briefly talk about them. You can see that I have rank rogue a little highly. I actually got a typo here. Right? I'll fix it after. So what I mean by that is. I have rank rank rogue a little highly. This is just because when I was playing the rogue during the server slam to level 20, it felt much better, especially after building the character with more legendaries. So over here, you guys can see I have rank rogue a little highly because rogue can clear almost all the content. If you haven't seen a previous video, which I have a link for you guys, the rogue clears, you know, it leads, you know, dungeon bosses, even world boss with a super fast speed. And the rogue legendaries, the twisting blade can be crafted on the second act with the codex from the legendary, you know, dungeons. So that means the rogue has a really good farming speed throughout the early game and also mid game. Now in comparison, I do believe the sources on necromancers are not bad as well because they don't require you know, that many items. For the barbarian and also for the druid, we do want one or two legendaries to really shine to farm you know, items and also farm dungeons. Now for the ease of the build, even though the necromancer has been nerfed quite a bit, I still feel the necromancer is the easiest to build. Simply, if you look at our necromancer build with our legendaries, what you can see is, even with a you know, bunch of corpses and even with weakened corpse explosion, we still deal with tons of damage just because of mechanics of the character and of the class. But that said, I do feel that the necromancer minions are much much weaker. Now, in terms of personal enjoyment, I feel like the Barbarian is still the most fun to me because you have so many weapons, you can build more legendaries. And the Druid is challenging and rewarding if you get it working. 
Now, I did not find a lot of enjoyment with Necromancer. This is why I wasn't sure if I want to play Necromancer anymore at the launch of the game. Because I like minions, I like summons, I even played the Druid as Summoner. And I like to play, you know, my Sorcerer as the Hydra Summoner. But the Hydra just got nerfed, right? So for the Necromancer, because the minions have, have been nerfed quite a bit, I'm really having a trouble to keep them alive, and I don't like to see my minions die. So this is why my enjoyment is a little lower on the Necromancer. And similarly, without having a minions build, I can't build thorns on my minions, I can't build, you know, minion horde build, I can't build mass army build for Necromancer. This is why the build variation is a little lower on the Necromancer. But for the Barbarian, you can go with two hand, one hand, weapon mastery, swapping weapons, you can go with thorn, you can go with kick, you can go with whirlwind, you can go with a lot of build. So I'm actually a little interested in playing the Barbarian, which I'll share with you guys very soon. Now over here, the next three reveals are a little harder to tell because we do not have all the data to level 50 and also 100. So those are the you know, raw DPS and also defensive mechanics and also how well it goes with other classes. One thing I want to share with Barbarian is because all the shots go with other classes, so this is why I think Barbarian will be really good to fighting a party with four players. And of course, I know that PvP is not for everyone, right? Personally, I'm on edge with PvP. If you get a lot of more loots, I'm happy to do 2VP PvP. But if I don't get a lot of loots, I don't want to be just killing players for the fun of it, right? So let me know in the comments below, guys, what do you think about this tier list? And of course, this is a personal tier list, and I have been testing a lot of builds, yes. But personally, I didn't test everything about the game, right? And once the game launches, we'll have an updated tier list. Now, if you guys haven't subscribed, it is a really good time to do so, because I'll be covering tons of Diablo 4 related topics and also videos and also guides. We'll be looking to the top meta builds, no meta builds, leveling up and also Paragon tricks. We'll also look into the latest events and also official updates and also changes to different characters and also different builds in the game. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and also turn the notification on, because a lot of you who are watching the videos have not subscribed. You can see 80% of the viewers who are watching our videos have not subscribed, so make sure you subscribe to stay tuned for the latest update for Diablo 4. Now that we had a look at the tier list and also got a bit of rough understanding of my views of the different classes, let's have a look at some of the other key considerations as a player we should consider before the official launch. The first one is, how much do you enjoy the class? Don't worry about the numbers, guys. Don't worry about the rogue has high numbers, this and that. Sometimes you just enjoy a class for the sake of it. You just like how the barbarian looks, or you just like the necromancer's design, or maybe you like the mechanics of the character. So don't worry about the numbers too much. You can still enjoy the characters because you love it, right? So this is the most highlight. Now the second thing is, are you gonna plan to play PvP a lot? Which if you are, and in most of the games, you know, usually range classes and also high mobility classes tend to win out with PvP. So we have seen a lot of PvP footages, you will be fighting monsters and also players in the zone. So if you can move fast, if you can you know, deal damage from afar, you really have the advantage. Now because we know seasons won't be coming very soon at the launch of the game, the second question you want to ask yourself is, are you going to play one class or multiple classes? Now for me, I like to play one class to a point that I feel like if I spend another 100 hours on it, I can't go too far, then I play other classes. And are you going to be farming for multiple classes and also uniques? Because at the moment we can't trade those, and if you get a legendary or unique of a different class, let's say if you get a Butcher's Cleaver, then you really want to play the Barbarian, right? So you don't want to be limited on those items. And what I'll do is, I'll make a video to show you guys the best uniques for each of your class. Now one of the more underrated and not often discussed factor is, are you going to play Diablo 4 as a solo player or a co-op player? Because this game is like an open world MMORPG all of a sudden, and there's a lot of mechanics like resetting servers, resetting events, resetting dungeons, and resetting everything, which that's how I got all my legendary sim you know, be the slam and open beater. That's how I built so many you know, builds. Because I had a friend who was sitting next to me and was actually helping me with his gold items, you know, gold items, and you know, anything he can help me, he was helping me a lot to make the build possible. Because we only have like two days, right? So the bigger question we want to ask ourselves as a player is, usually I play action RPG very solo, and I was just happy that my friend had a bit of time to help me. So are you going to play with your friend? And if you're playing solo, what class is best for solo? And we'll make a video about that, of course, don't worry too much. Now my friend wants to play Rogue, and <laughs> no surprise, right? He likes Twisting Blade. So you can see in the replay I was using his Rogue. So if you're going to play with a friend or play with your guildmates or any other players, then you want to think about what are the items and also stats for your class and also for your build. 
So this is why I was thinking about Barbarian over Necromancer. Because for me, Barbarian actually have a very unique approach. So over here you can see I rank Barbarian the class variation to be 9, because I think Barbarian can make use of some of the gears that nobody else want. Like the Thorn Gears, if I get a socket of Thorn Gear in early, mid game, or even end game, this can be very good. Because most players don't want that, or most players don't need it. And I can be buying those gears for cheap from players. And my friend who plays Rogue can share me his gears that has Thorn it. And then I can play a Thorn Tanking Barbarian where he deals more damage as a Rogue. So the next part of course is talking about playing a trading system. It is quite important in the game you'll be trading, you know, high-end, you know, ancient and also secret items, which are rare items, and you'll be trading a lot of gold. And this is very important. So how expensive is your class to build? And how many items do you need to fully become powerful? Are you going to make a class that, you know, make resources or gold for other classes? Or are you going to make a class that eats up everything and to minimax the, big, the strongest class? And again, guys, stay tuned. I'll be making lots of videos on this part. So finally, here's my personal dilemma. I want to play Necromancer, but it's really nerfed. And I also really like Barbarian. I would love to play Druid as my second class, because I love the companions and like how it works. But as a first class, it is definitely much slower to get all the content down and also to farm items. Now ideally, if you have a look at our tier list, you know that the sources will be the best option for me when my friend plays Rogue Ride, because I don't want to be playing the same class as him. But I kind of like the hack and slash style of the fighter characters, and for me, the major sense of spellcasting was never my thing with action RPG. So this is why I haven't played Sorcerer a lot during the beta, and this is why I'm still picking between Necromancer and also Barbarian. What I do is, I'll be making additional videos for you guys about leveling up the class, about farming for Paragon levels, and also endgame. And once we look at all those, we'll make another video about which of the best classes for me and also for you guys. So stay tuned and also subscribe for more of Diablo content very soon. Now coming over to our final part of the video. So because I have crafted a lot, a lot of builds guys, I want to play and also I want to provide a few of the builds to you guys so you can see the highlight of each of the classes and also what was possible in the open beta and what was possible in the server slam. Now do keep in mind, we only had, you know, about six days in the open beta and two days in the server slam. So I couldn't test a lot of build. I had a lot of my theory crafting build, but they are a little out of date because of the nerves. Now briefly going through each of the class. For the Necromancer, I do feel like the Necromancer is very good with farming with our legendaries. So this build is really good. Now as for the other builds, the Necromancer has been nerfed a lot. So the top three builds over here, they are gone. <laughs> They're not that great. So the Sacrificial Necromancer with the Bone build or the Blood build still works. And they work pretty well, because likely for Necromancer, if you're playing now, you'll be sacrificing your minions. So this is why the Necromancer was super good. Now, you know, she's a little weaker. And if we look at the Druid, well, the Druid is good. The Druid has a lot of more potential with hybrid build with Earth and also Companions. And also the poison damage with Van Creeper was very, very good. Now, in terms of the other parts of the Druid, you do need a special legendary for the Earth Druid. And you need two legendaries to make the Companion Druid super, super broken. And we have those builds. And all of those builds still works wonderfully for the Druid. Now coming over to the Barbarian, I'm slightly inclined to play the Barbarian now as I look at it. So for the Barbarian, we have lots of builds. We have Rend Bleeding, we have Whirlwind, we have Summoning Buddies, we have Helmet of Ancient, we have the Super Slam Kick build. But I only included two here because I didn't get to test a lot of them. We have a lot of theory crafting build. So I did test out the Thorn Barbarian in level 20 after the changes to the nerfs. And yes guys, I can feel that the Thorns Barbarian is much much weaker. Before, if you look at the build, it was entirely broken. I was on the hardest difficulty, everything dies without me clicking any button. Now I actually have to click some buttons. But I think the Thorns Barbarian is still going to be very fun to play. Now if we look at the Rogue, oh well, boy, she is very powerful guys. There's a lot of variety of build for the Rogue that doesn't require legendaries like this one over here. And also if you haven't seen the Twisting Blade build, even at level 20 guys, I was carrying an entire group of our players to kill the pro boss. I killed the boss with 5 minutes to spare, with level 20. So the Rogue is very powerful. And if my friend's not playing it, I'll be playing the Rogue. So there's a lot of variety with the rogue, you can go with melee build, you can go with range build, you can go with a cold rogue, which can be very good for the PvP. You can also go hybrid poison trap rogue, and that can be really good. Now finally, we have the sources. 
And I do want to say, unfortunately, guys, I didn't have enough time to test this, test out the sources because knowing that the service time was only two days, I want to try as many builds as I can. So I tried the other four classes. I didn't have time for the sources because, you know, there's only one me, right? So what I want to do is there is a build that was shared to me by a friend and there is also tentative build that was shared to me about, you know, the Maxwell GG with the build for the sources. They're very similar. They're going with firewalls. They're going with burning damage. So you can see the builds over here. I do think the sources is going to be very powerful because as a mage, as the sources class, usually with Diablo 4, those are always one of the top classes in the game, right? So even though I don't have any particular up-to-date video, I do have a lot of out-of-date video for the sources, but I don't want to confuse you guys. So I'm going to provide you guys with two of the links if you want to look into the sources. So at the moment, what I hear is the Hydra is massively nerfed. You can still deal damage with Firebolt and also Firewall. And I'll be building your sources from level 1 to level 50 to you guys to show you what you can do. And then we'll look into the sources Paragon and also Steel Perks and also Legendaries and also Uniques to build the sources together before the launch of the game. Now, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. It took me a long time to think about Excel and also numbers because I'm pretty bad with, you know, ranking it. And also took me a while to think about the things we want to think about. And I do, and I will be making lots of videos for Diablo 4. I'm not just saying that I love the game and I want to plan for it, right? So I'll be looking to Paragon levels, level 1 to 50. Before that, you want to level up, right? After that, you look into Paragons. And then after that, you look into Uniques. So stay tuned for a lot of content for the early game, mid game, and also late game. And also the best tips of farming and also the best build for each of the classes. Now, before you go, and if you guys didn't know, we have a new YouTube channel. And if you guys haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe and check out the behind the scenes and also fun clips and also more stories about us. And then you get to know me a little more personally instead of just reading the news and also the games, right? So I want to share a little bit more with you guys. So make sure you check this channel out if you're interested about Matt and also Uni. She's really funny too. And she's really shy. So I want to give her a surprise and do a shout out for the new channel to get some subscribers. <laughs> Thank you guys. I'll see you guys next time.